All right, everybody out there in the Craft Chest Nation, it is I, Craft Chest, here once again with a video about Arc Age. And yes, I drank the Kool Aid, everybody. Um, I went ahead, broke down, and got the game. And so far, playing this game, uh, the little bit that I have the past four days, I'm really enjoying uh, what I've run into so far. How come every time? Oh, that's just a little guild meeting or something. I was like, there's been some PvP going over there, little uh, battles and what have you. But anyway, playing Arcade past couple of four days, I have really enjoyed myself. And this game, when it releases, will be around at least really strong, I'd say, for about a year. Um, maybe more than that, depending on the community. Depending on if we have certain peoples out there that don't uh, ruin... Uh, the game for everybody else like happens a lot in some games as long as the game doesn't release and become any shape form or fashion pay to win which this is a self-sustaining ecosystem in the alpha all right there is no cash shop there are no boundaries as far as what you can do with your character whether it be a fighter if you're a quester an explorer um, a crafter a tradesman a, uh, a logistics person doesn't matter a fisherman a pirate a warrior you know uh, all of it together it doesn't matter you could do whatever it is you want to do because that's the sandbox part of it you can build a house you can get a little plot of land like I have here oh look at there somebody's cutting down a tree what hey look at there we found somebody cutting down a tree here's a guy cutting down somebody's trees Huh. I hope it's his trees. <laughs> nope, he just straight up came and took some trees and left. You could steal people's trees, <laughs> apparently. So there you go. Depending on how many infamy points you have. So uh, you, if you get caught, you know, you go to jail or you go on trial and you can potentially go to jail. See, they're having a trial right now. Those go on all the time. Uh, this game is amazing so far from what I've seen. Now, I would suggest if you got two or three friends and you got a buck fifty to put down on the game to get in the alpha, go for it. You're going to have a lot of fun. I would not suggest, however, getting in this game and accepting the first guild invite or look for that big guild to get into unless that's your thing because you're going to miss out on the leveling experience, you're going to miss out on the exploration. You're going to miss out on the crafting, and that's one thing that I want to do is learn how to be a master crafter and get my proficiency up to make weapons and armor and potions and protections and different little small structures uh, for when the game releases. I'll actually know what the hell I'm doing and be able to... Dude, you better back the fuck up. You better not try to go after my trade pack. I don't think they can, but... Kind of curious, looking kind of looking kind of crazy back here. I can tell he's looking behind him and thinking about it. Hmm. I don't know. I think my trade pack's protected because it says it's got five days. But you know, some people are like that. Let me see. What level is this cat? Oh, he's level 50, of course. Uh, established justice. I don't know. Hmm. Back to this, but I want to learn all these things, and my next quest right now, as a matter of fact, is to take this trade pack that you see on the ground of strawberries and deliver it to a certain place in the world, which I'm not going to pull up all that and read all that, but anyway, that's one thing you could do. Now, the other night, and I'm going to go back and highlight this and post it, because it was amazing. I was out there grinding spiders, and everybody, if you get the joke, I was grinding spiders, and literally I was, because there's this area with these big spiders. Um, and I looked, and I saw a donkey coming down the road. No big deal. And then there was another one, then another one. And then I looked, and I was like, what the hell is that? It was like a huge, I don't know, at least 100 donkeys. At least 100 donkeys going down the road. And it was this big guild that was taking packs somewhere. I forget what the name of it is. The name of the people were, but it was an independent guild. It wasn't like one of the little Nui Trader, you know, guild or whatever. But I was like amazed by this, like saying, hey, somebody actually is going logistical in this game for when the game releases 
they're going to be the supplier to all the real big guilds that establish themselves to build castles and you know siege weapons and defensives and all this other stuff because you make your own castle sieges you know you set a date and the way it works is that if a person has a castle and you want to siege on them uh, the two parties, you know, they they get together on a date and say, okay, we're going to clash on Thursday at 4 p.m. And then the opposing team tries to take the castle. And hopefully you get all your people scheduled up to where they're all there to defend the castle. So, yeah, this dude's eyeballing my trade pack. I hope he's not able to take it because that would suck. He's looking. He's thinking about it. I got my eye on you, e Oxes, Eoxes. I don't know what your name is, but anyway. I see you over there. Anyway, back to the game. I would suggest that you get into the game, do the quest, make you a character in the alpha, maybe the closed beta whenever it comes out, and play through the game by yourself or with two or three friends. Maybe a party of five and make your own little small band of brothers or band of the hawk or whatever it is that you want to do and play through the game and learn everything there is to learn uh, for the path that you're interested in. Because if you pull up on the fly, anywhere in the world, you could pull up different crafting abilities and different proficiencies is what they call it in the game. Myself, I want to work on alchemy. I want to work on metallurgy for being uh, good at that. I also want to get uh, masonry and carpentry up so that I can build a house. And there's weaponry right there. So I'm really going to be working on... Um, those type of things because I'm kind of thinking I want to be a trade merchant slash militia type person maybe to protect caravans because there's going to have to be somebody to protect the caravans um, unless they keep everybody under level 30 which I don't know if that's going to really work out a whole lot because eventually those characters are going to get enough XP just doing the runs uh, to where they're going to be able to be attacked after level 30 and who knows when the actual release happens if they're going to drop that or raise it or whatever uh, as far as that's concerned but right now uh, that's the case you could do you could you could be a fisherman if you want to you could be a pirate you know you could be a bow with a great sword you know great you know a great weapons fighter like I have right here that's what I'm used to calling great weapons fighter from Rosh um, you could be a farmer that's all you want to do is be a farmer and do that and put together trade bundles which are these right here where they tell you to put together a certain amount this one was a hundred strawberries and then you get a certificate of quality to, to make the jam and boof, mind blown, I know. It's just so much. But the questing is quite engaging. Uh, it's nothing that's mundane or repetitive. You can grind out and you do get pretty decent XP from grinding. You do have overachievements and better gear that's offered to you for overachieving and better experience and different things like that. More gold, more... Uh, just different things for overachieving. Like if it tells you to go out there and kill 8 orcs and you kill 12 or 16 orcs, it'll say overachieved. And then you can go turn it in and get bonuses. And it's not every quest, but a lot of quests like that. And I've noticed the main ones are uh, protecting villages or these uh, characters are a nuisance. Please get rid of them. And it'll give you overachieves for that. And I'm sure there are different overachieves for like mining and different things like that. Seems like I remember that. Uh, so the questing is quite engaging. It's nothing mundane. It's nothing that's going to be just overly repetitive. You get experience from pretty much everything that you do in the game, albeit, you know, 12 XP or 43 XP or whatever from, like, mining a rock or picking a flower or letting your mount follow behind you because your mounts and your pets, unless they're already max level, which the pet or the mounts are not, uh, you actually have to raise the mounts. It's amazing how that works. It's just so many things. It's like its own little ecosystem, but your mounts. Important thing about a mount. Your mount gets XP by linear foot or battles that it witnesses or helps with, if that makes sense. So every linear foot, you get a percentage of XP for that linear foot travel, however many it be. All right, you can have your mount, you can either be on it or it have it follow you doing quests and it will gain XP next to you, which is pretty neat. Um, you don't have to uh, do certain things with your mount to get it, uh, to gain XP, but those are a couple of things that I know work. Uh, and you could run in a circle. Actually, I saw somebody doing that. There was somebody last night, I don't know if they locked their keys down or what they did, but they were just sitting there walking in a circle, <laughs> leveling their mount, leveling their mount. It was amazing. 
And you can also get battle armor and different things, weapons and spells and things for your mounts and your pets to make them move faster, to make them stronger, to give them more DPS, to give them more life. It's amazing. Hey, they are. They're battling back there. But I think they're just sparring. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, is it going down? Oh, it don't let you actually die. Okay. Looks like that sorceress had him. That dude's not, he doesn't have any charges, though. He's just jumping and running towards them. You need to get your charges. And then the skill system. Let me go over that right quick. Your skill system. Hit the right letter. Where's my letter? The skill system. Where is it? Where is it? Damn it, I thought it was over here. Fail. Combat. Is this it? Yeah, okay. I did hit the right letter. It was on the wrong tab. All right. You can pick anything you want to be. If you want to be a sorceress that uses a bow, go for it. If you want to be a great weapons fighter that uses a bow like I do, go for it. If you want to be a straight up rogue, and this is the thing, they call it different things in this game. But if you want to be a rogue that dual daggers or dual swords, that sneaks up on the opponent using your stealth, which makes you invisible, and slits somebody's throat, go for it. You could do that. It's just amazing. There are, you could be a necromancer. There's an occultism skill uh, class in here. And I don't have them all pulled up because I don't think it will. I don't see it on here. But you could do any mix and match that you want. Now, there are certain skills that go and be like a synergy or bone or what do they call it combos in here with other uh areas for example archery you have all your little combat skills over here you have your passives then over in shadow play you have at level 20 something called endless arrows now that right there sounds pretty good it gives uh, 60 percent of the range damage which is going to depend on your bow and that's one of the things I'm going to do is make a crafted bow, if that's possible. I haven't even looked at that. I've looked at the swords and armor and all that, but I'm pretty sure it's possible. I haven't gone down the whole list because you can get overwhelmed with the game as far as everything that you could do. And I'm not even scratching the surface, not even not even doing that to, to all the, the things you could do in this game. But synergies work together as far as this, having a combo with... What's a good... It's got... Let's see, combo with... Um, Slow target, which is... we're slow target? It's got to be over here someplace. I don't know. But anyway, you get my point. You have this one as a combo with different things down here. Um, I'm also using a great weapon, which is a two-handed weapon. And you can pretty much make a tank with a two-handed weapon. I remember a guy in Rosh, his name was Stun. And I miss Stun because Stun was one of those guys who worked his ass off, literally. Didn't cash up a whole lot of stuff. He did cash up pots, I will say that, because you could face roll pots in the game. But he was one that put in work down in the dungeons, botting his ass off. Because it's legal to bot in Ross, you could just sit there and grind if you want to in a bot. And they had a built in bot. Um, and had some pretty damn good gear. Not the best gear. And he would just walk through the world, la, 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 la. Hey, come over here. Pow, spine breaker, you're dead. You know, and then, you know, do his little two, two skill, three skill, whatever. Um, that's one of the things you could do with the game. You know, if you want to be a great weapons fighter in this PvP, go for it. Which I see some people back here. You see them tooling around. I know you're watching them. That's okay. You got this dude with the sword and the shield. Looks like he's using a sword and a shield. He is. He's using a sword and a shield. You got a person back here with a bow on their back. Uh, looks like they're using a short spear or something. What is that? I don't know. Wait, no, that's dual. That's dual wielding. That person's dual wielding, and so on and so forth. The thing is, with this sorceress, they have the range advantage, and they can just sit there and kite you. But at the same time, he could counter kite if he had a bow. And that's one thing I don't like about sorcerers, though, in any MMO, is that whenever you actually do try to duck and dodge and move out of the way and backflip the curvature of the actual skill locks onto you and if you try to move to the side instead of it being a linear attack you can't really dodge it and that's kind of bullshit which i've noticed that happening even with the uh enemy in the game which i don't know it's a small annoyance but whatever so before i digress too far look i've been running the stream been running a lot the past four days hopefully i'll be able to run it more i invite everybody out there if you want to uh, entertaining single player hey i'm a solo player that's the way i am right now as far as the new game's concerned i don't want to you know this right here is fun 
And if that's some friends getting together over there, they actually know each other, that's awesome. But I wouldn't suggest you jumping into the game and joining, you know, the Kingdom of Avalor guild or whatever they call themselves, the Orenthal or the Waffle House or anything like that, just to be a fanboy or just to have a tag. Enjoy the game for what it is. It's an alpha Korean game. Uh, and we all know the Koreans can make some damn good games. We know the Koreans are serious about their games. And if this game survived over there, and they're bringing it to uh, North America and EU and Russia, of course, and I think Brazil is actually going to eventually get their own too. BR, BR. Uh, you'll really enjoy it. But I would suggest learning the game first, then join a guild. That's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Hopefully I'll get some other people uh, to play with me and we can learn together maybe there's some things that you learn that i don't know i always watch the chat and listen to people you know or watch people as much as i can as far as what they talk about crafting or uh fighting or where things are and you know information shared in the game is what's fair to everybody and here is a promise and i, I wasn't going to talk about this in this video but i will make this promise to you it looks like who is that over there oh it's somebody's wolf um there are some streamers out there, and this is something I'm really disappointed in. There are some streamers out there, not one, not two, a handful, five, six, ten, that I've heard, personally heard, it's on their channel, their bots say it, that when the game releases, they're not going to play with you unless you're subscribed to them. I will make this personal promise to each and every person out there right now, and it will always be like this. In order for anybody to play with me, you will never ever have to be a subscriber follower watcher you know give me to play and be in our guild once we actually get a guild together and believe me uh we already got the gears turning here are the gods of games yeah they they got a little twinkle in their eye they want to play this game and you know once we get that going i promise you you will never have to pay us to play with us because that's bullshit if you're a true streamer or a true gamer that loves your fans, you know, that like you enough to be in your chat, to be a watcher, to be a follower, let that dictate your brain into saying, my fans are owed. It's kind of like being a wrestler. You know, you don't have people out there going to pay to watch this wrestler other than getting the admission. You know what I mean? They do it for the love of the, the watchers. Well, basically what I'm saying, you know, you got wrestlers, they come and go. You know, like, who was it though? CM Punk, he picked up his ball and went home. You know, for different reasons, of course. But y'all get the point. You will never have to pay to play with us. It's bottom line, all right? So until next time, everybody, remember it is a craft of the mind. Go out there and have some fun. And hopefully we'll be seeing you in some Arc Age here in a little while. See you later.